Hello and welcome to the latest episode of MEP Engineered Online. I'm editor Tom Oxtoby and today we are fortunate to be joined by not one but two represent representatives of indoor air monitoring solutions firm SenseGreen. Uh, they are namely Hassan Basri Tosan, who is Chief Executive Officer, and Tolga Kandan, who is Chief Business Officer. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. I hope we find you both in good spirits today. Well, Tom, very nice to see you. And uh, we are trying to keep as best as possible, given the challenging situations like everyone else, but we are very hopeful towards the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having us here today, Tom. And uh, absolutely pleasure speaking today, explaining how innovation is driving a future of buildings. And thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity. No problem, no problem. Uh, as you mentioned there, Hassan, uh, SenseGreen has suggested that air quality indexes will play a critical factor in the decisions we make about where we live and work in the future. Um, obviously, that uh, debate has been um, sped up, if you like, by the events of 2020. Do you want to elaborate a little bit on this prediction for us? Yeah, absolutely. So we are, I think all of us are seeing the people who are holding their breath inside the elevators and their first faces turning red like a tomato. So the 2020 has been a milestone with the pandemic, with the wildfires, and all of these triggered a massive wake-up call with regards to what we actually are breathing. Is it a virus? Is it a slow poison? Is it a heavy metal? And uh, as everyone knows, air is an essential element of our existence. So unless you are living in a submarine or spaceship, air is consumed from the very same fountain by each of us, uh, segregated by uh, and grouped by buildings and geography. And uh, unfortunately, unlike a hundred years ago, the air is not so good anymore uh, with the industrialization, the urbanization, and people have now developed the urge to see the contents of the air they are, they are breathing. Like when you go to a supermarket and reading the backside of a packed food before purchasing it, you just want to see what's inside that is going to enter my body. So it's definitely sooner than expected. Places without air monitoring will be avoided. People will start choosing. There is, there is no doubt on that. Which schools to enlist their children or which malls to visit, uh, which hotels to stay, or even which hospitals or banks to use as per their indoor air quality indexes is going to become like very ordinary, like the weather report. What is your air rating when you are going through the hotels in your browser, you'll be looking at the, not only the cleanliness index, but what is their air index. So you, you, you just cannot ignore the demands of the people. So this is definitely inevitable. Mm. Hassan, any, anything to add on that? It's like the, there's never been greater scrutiny on, on HVAC systems and, and getting the very best out of them to ensure, you know, health and well-being. Um, you know, phys physical well-being, uh, c comfort when people are at work. And this has a bottom line cost for, for employers. Yeah, so uh, as we transform our buildings most of the time, let's say uh, we spend half of half living in commercial spaces versus residential, and the commercial spaces has been ignored up to now. And let's face the reality that now post-COVID increasing the pressure on both buildings and uh, facility managers in those spaces because nobody's now getting into those spaces, including gyms or cinemas, etc. These businesses are uh, getting out of the business because nobody's getting in. These are depending on people physically being in those spaces. So that's why, yes, COVID definitely increased a pressure on those spaces to run their systems better and improve. Improving also is not enough now so they need to transparently show it to the society so they can actually, again, attract the visitors and customers. And we, of course, see like different part of the world uh, will adapt in, in different pace. In Singapore, for instance, we see a higher rate of adoption and there's a higher pressure from the society. And this is becoming a collaborative game, like not only from businesses, but only government, policymakers, 
uh, also institutions are collaborating to uh, drive this change. Let's take an example. One of our customers, one of the largest shopping malls in the region, they've adopted our solution. And in the post-COVID, now they transparently sharing their indoor air, not only from a CO2 perspective, but other pollutants. Let's face the fact that 60% of COVID transmission is airborne. So if you monitor and transparently publish it, they, as, as the others will see, a significant increase in footfall. So of course, it's a uh, bidirectional game, yeah. And I know something you guys are particularly big on is uh, buildings being able to talk to us uh, as occupants. Could you explain how SenseGreen products are addressing that and, and how exactly you extract this information from buildings for you know, wider education and, and obviously improved health? Well, Tom, I've been in this uh, HVAC business for the past seven, eight years now actively, apart from being in the Gulf for the last 14 years. This is the exact elephant in the room. And it's surprising me very much how come we've been so blind and we have completely ignored it. So can you imagine, we are spending millions of dollars to invest into HVAC equipment, and then we buy softwares and hire large teams to operate them. And on top of that, we are spending 60% of a building's utility bill just to run the air conditioning. So why do we all do that? All of this is for whom? It's for the people, for the occupants. Do we ever ask the occupants, how do they feel about the air? No, nobody is doing that. So it's unbelievable how we are just running the buildings on standard automation based on the decisions or some uh, protocols of a couple of people deciding, okay, I will run the uh, fans at this speed now. I'll maintain this temperature, but what about the people? So, Sunscreen is not only making the air visible, but we are also opening a two-way real-time communication channel between the occupants and the building managers. So, so that now the occupants can see how good is the air and building managers can see how satisfied are the occupants? Are they happy with it? What can I improve? Am I over ventilating, under ventilating? Is my air dirty or clean? So this was the missing link in the HVAC segment. And it's not only UE, it's every part of the world almost. Uh, one of our customers, uh, we placed 20 sensors across their four story buildings. And using the occupant feedback interface, even in the first month, there was a huge response. We received like uh, 200 feedbacks. Unfortunately, 40% of them were a bit criticism, like, like a complaint. But imagine up to that moment, nobody was listening to these people. In the following months, the feedbacks have increased to a number of 350 and only 20% of being criticism and complaint. You see, even within one month, just by listening to people and doing the uh, low hanging fruits, quick fixes, there was a massive increment in the uh, satisfaction of the people. So that is the power of the data and real efficient management of an HVAC system with people in the center. We always talk about people-centric, customer-centric, and we are spending many, many millions of US dollars for the air and for the people. And now it is time we listen to them as well. Mm, mm, that's interesting. So do you think, do you think uh, it will be a, an occupant, occupant demand or a, or a standard strive or innovation? Which, which drives which in this, in this uh, scenario? Yeah, let me answer that. It's a, a great question and it's kind of a, Chicken and, chicken and egg problem, actually, right? Uh, we, we, like all businesses, of course, they need to increase their existing portfolio of performance as well as overall, let's say, customer satisfaction. But there's a limit that they can make. I mean, of course, they need to invest to attract the customers, visitors, make the occupants and employees happy. But this is, again, the innovation and the mass change should be a collaboration between governments, uh, private sector, and public sector, because um, some, some, some of these buildings, they will need grant support incentives 
to drive the mass change. But as, as, as we see, like real pressure is coming from people as businesses are getting on fire and um, they need to do something. So I would say the first um, urge will come from the businesses themselves with the people uh, driving the pressure towards this uh, transparency move. Mm. And, and could, you, could you each give me a, uh, a wider take on what you think building management systems and protocols are going to look like as this decade progresses? It's obviously uh, going to be defined by the events of this year. Um, but with respect of how that's going to impact the role of facility managers as well. Well, Tom, uh, this is not only for the facility managers with the digitization. Everybody is asking the same question. Are the robots going to take over my job? So hopefully not yours, not mine, but uh, it is a bit inevitable partially. So no one can actually escape the gravity of digitization. FMs will have to simply adopt or disappear, as simple as that. It's no more, let's put three plumbers, two electricians and a carpenter game now. It's a technology game with uh, IoT and AI rising to the core of the things. But here comes a big problem. And uh, everybody is talking about IoT, AI, but no one is addressing again another elephant in the room. Uh, around 90% of the buildings are old, all right? Plus five years, plus 10 years. 10 years is old enough with the current uh, speed of the technology. And applying IoT to them is expensive. Cabling itself is a nightmare. If you go to a hotel and tell them, well, you need to put this and these devices and you need to pull uh, 250 cables in each and every room. The, the chief engineer will jump off the building. So it's, it's uh, not practical, not realistic. Everybody wants the IoT, but uh, these challenges are there. And on the other hand, the building owners squeezed by the uh, fragile financials, they often resist to invest in CAPEX. So FMs are pressurized, facility managers from both sides. And uh, unfortunately, there is no magic wand to solve this problem. But here is the solution. I'll give you, I'll explain this to you with a, over an example. One of, one of our biggest clients is actually a global bank. And they have too many different kinds of buildings scattered across the geography. And uh, surprisingly, when we were really, really fresh, they were the ones who approached to us with the ambition, well, we want to digitize and use IoT and map the air in, across all our facilities to apply standards. So their challenge is obviously a diverse set of building types and ages. Some of them are high rise, some of them are just like a branch and old, new, all mixed. At the very end of the project, which was not very long, just a couple of weeks to deploy everything, they were really amazed how easy it's been to map their air so rapidly. So no cabling, no extra workload. Well, this is one of the concerns of the FMs. What am I going to do with all these data? Because of the AI, you don't need an additional resource. The AI is going to do the analytics for the data. So now with the use of the technology, regardless of the barriers, they are able to convert their facilities into smarter, smarter ones. You cannot say this is smart, this is stupid. There are levels of smartness as well. So any FM, summing it up, has to achieve two major things or simply disappear. Number one is aligning their activities as per the actual needs of the occupants. And in order to handle this massive data, they need a digital communication mechanism. There is no other way around it. Second thing is the adopt IoT driven operations. Otherwise, it's going to be again too much for them to handle because they are pressured on the financial uh, expectations from many, many uh, different angles. So in the industry, I, I can see a lot of trial and error with different type of vendors, with different type of technologies, and uh, not every solution is applicable to everyone. 
uh, and uh, some solutions are good for some. It's like wearing a different, trying different suits or jackets. And uh, even through the time, my old jackets are not fitting me anymore after the pandemic. So you need to be bold and you need to be the early adopter because there is a trial and learning period. And if you are mm. late in this game, simply you'll, you'll, you'll disappear. Uh, mm. In other words, you snooze, you lose them. <laughs> no. Has, Hassan, anything, anything to add, add, add to that? Uh, you snooze, yeah, fine, you lose. Final, <laughs> yeah, final remark. This can be, uh, this can look like a banking industry. Like uh, we, used to, we, we all used to go to banks with a physically with the branches to do even like the smallest tag tasks but now we do it on almost everything on our mobile phone so i don't even remember when i visited a bank branch last time so buildings are yet yeah, they are resisting at a first maybe couple of years but as they see the change in a massive scale we will now diseliminate or we will not visit a building that doesn't offer let's say this digital banking we can uh, look like that you 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 now choose your bank uh, according to like which one offers the best digital experience. So you will start choosing your building, which offers the best management for me, for occupant, because I am paying the rent, I am owning the space, so I should have the control of both the space and the air itself. So transformation is there. We're still at very early stages, but hopefully it will help driving it uh, at an extreme pace. Excellent, excellent. Some great, some great insight there. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to speak to you today about this very important subject. Um, I'd just like to once again thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Tom. Pleasure being here. Thank you. And of course, thank you, viewer, for tuning in. And we will see you on the next episode of MEP Engineered.